Hi guys, welcome to the channel and in today's episode we are back in the Defender project vehicle and we're going to be fitting a slick shift. Let's get on to it. I'm not 100% familiar with this product. Someone else mentioned to me uh, that this product existed and it would give me a far more modern feel to the gear changes in the vehicle. Now, I've been driving Defenders for a long time, so I don't have a massive problem with the way they change gear. I kind of accept it now, but I am interested to see just how much of a difference a product like this can make. So it's a, it's a fairly easy install, apparently. There are a few little things that you have to be uh, conscious of, but essentially you're fitting uh, this needle i guess you could call it uh pivot point um it's got a longer throw on it so your shifts your stick movement should be shallower um, and shorter so uh, it's not gonna be a sports car but it will be improved um, you get a uh, additional nylon bush a new nylon bush in there and this will all become apparent when i start stripping down um the the housing for the the gear lever and then you get this spacer now the videos i've seen online because obviously it doesn't come with any instructions so i've had to familiarize myself are quite old so uh, nearly 10 years old now some of the videos and they were using uh, two spacers not just one okay so uh, removing the gear knob shouldn't be too hard it's literally just unscrews on this one uh, well kind of the interior look has uh, not come undone so that's probably something worth changing so i don't know if you can see here so i've taken the uh, the gear knob off but it's still got the rubber housing that's supposed to be inside this gear knob and that's how you thread it on so uh, i think we're going to be fitting a new gear knob at some point I'll probably stretch over that, yeah. Okay. Uh, then we've got this second layer of uh, foam, which is a deadening agent. So it's rare you see all this on an old Defender. They haven't got hardly any of this stuff on there normally. Uh, we've even got the rubber boots look. So we've got an additional rubber boot on the diff uh, transfer lever. We don't have to touch that. We do have to take this one off. Again, that shouldn't be too hard. Okay. Now we use our 17. That's fairly loose. There's a little washer in there, under there as well, so don't lose that. What I'm going to do is actually keep those in one hand. Lift. They should rock off the splines. There we go. Uh, it's a bit dry on there, so probably could do with a bit of grease when we refit that. Um, we have to just leave this spring off of here. There we go. Like that. Then we use our 10 mil. Now this, there's a bit in here that we don't want to lose. Uh, there's a spring with a nylon slider on the end of it. I'll show you that in a second when I get this off. So there's the retainer bolt and the washer. I'm going to put that football there. So this is now free to come up but what we've got to be careful of is just in here uh, there is a spring. So when we pull it there look there's the spring uh, and that does have a nylon head on it. So that is the bit you don't want to lose because it doesn't come in the kit. You don't get a replacement one of those. Now we're ready to remove our old, I don't know what you call it, lever, arm, pin. This is the difference. So you can see the difference, I hope. So you can see the difference in the reach and that is the essentially the difference that we're gonna be going for. Four of these on the outside should be Just crack them off. Okay, so we've got all those removed. This should just now lift off. And there is our housing. So we've got a gasket on there and that's still stayed on. So actually, to be fair, if you've done this yourself and you haven't had a replacement, that gasket could uh, be stuck onto the housing. So you wanna scrape that off uh, and possibly get a new one. So we're not complete though. We have got a little bit look on the outside here. So we've got a little bit missing on our gasket. Not too worried about that, to be honest. Um, I've got some Hylamar, maybe I could put that in there. In here, you have uh, an Allen key. That is a five mil, there's a Allen thread. 
and we need to try and uh, loosen that off which means this knuckle will come off and then we use circlips to remove the cir circlip pliers to remove the circlip at the base of this bush um, so just wanted to show you what I'm doing because you might not be able to see in detail oh yeah there was no way that was coming out with a an allen key no way there's your grub screw okay oh, it's absolutely minging let's give that a clean right so this is our knuckle if you like and you can just see there's a circlip there which we're going to remove I've got these circlip pliers from um, Screwfix and they actually take four or five different attachments and they're only six quid so even if they just work for this application I think that's pretty good value so let's have a look let's put them in there open them up off it comes all right six quid they did work okay let's pop that down there now uh, this is where we've got our bush so that just pulls out there you go so that can go to one side we've got a brand new one here we go so we've got our I've got plenty of oil on my hands so <laughs> I'm just gonna exchange some of the oil from my hands onto that bush and then we can just slide that back in again I hope there we go and then we've got to put our circlet back on what I've got to try and do is get the narrow piece near this edge here so that will go on easier that was the problem I had There we are, happy days. Right, so we have our new bush in place, so we can now slide this back onto the shaft and relocate our grub screw. I'm not gonna go super tight on this like the other person did, because that was bonkers. There we go, now that we've <coughs> got that all back on, just going to clean the face up on that casting where the gasket sat because we're now going to fit our extender what a shame you can't see this when it's fitted it's quite a nice little bit of kit so it's uh, aluminium cnc machined a billet and it's anodized in blue so it's kind of you know it's there but it'd be nice if you could see it anyway that goes on i think this way around so teddy bear is at the top that's it just slides straight over the top now you do also get new bolts because you've got that extra depth to get through so that's on the top you get four of these longer bolts with the spring washer so just drop these into place and then I'll nip them up with the socket right that's in loose perfect right so I've got the new pin in place, if that's what we're going to call it. Uh, let me now just tighten up those bolts. So work in the traditional star fashion. So one corner, opposite corner, one corner, opposite corner. Right, the one tricky part we have to do, and for this I've actually bought my blade through because what I want to do is while this is up I don't think there's that much spring in our spring but we have to locate the spring in there and then as we push it down it's got to slot in so I'm gonna mm. so I've got it back in I'm gonna push it in as I push the pin down hopefully there okay we've got our spring in we've got the pin in which is this big thing here I'm going to call it now we have to leave with the springs either side of that assembly so these two springs here we've got to leave those up over the top of the pins like we did before and basically these two bolts with the lock nut on them give us our adjustment so we'll basically get it in place first before we start seeing if we need any adjustments so lever this past the bolt and over the bolt and onto the pin 
like that. Same again this side. Right, so we've got that in position. Now if we refit our glare stick and just test, we shouldn't really, we don't really want any movement. Now, they say put it into third. So we've got fourth, there's third. Right, and I've got movement, can you see that? So what I've got is actually a rocking movement between uh, the pin and the spring. So what I need to do is lower that spring so it's touching the pin and stops that wobble. We're going to have to put our securing screw with the washer back in place and that will stop the new pin, we've called it, uh, from lifting out. So nip that up. Again, don't go crazy. Just nip it up. Um, now, we're going to loosen these. So I'm basically going to work the lock nut off first. There we go. So you've got a little nut underneath and that's locked up against the housing. If I loosen that, just finger look. And now what I'm going to do is going to wind the top of the bolt down into the housing, if I can. Yep. And what I'm trying to do is just lower it so that this spring moves down and touches the uh, the pins on the on the main pin shaft. I'm going to thread it into the housing to lower the spring on this side now. And they do say do this in third gear. Maybe this is the one that's got is the slackest fitment position. There. Now I am tight. So I'm in third. There's a little bit, a little bit of rock. So you have got a bit of movement on this shaft uh, where there's a bushing inside this housing. So you can see you get a bit of mo natural movement anyway. Um, but the throw now is really short. And you can just see that spring look working against there. So when it's in a relaxed position, I'm not getting any flex. Now that's actually a bit, no, I like that. I might just tighten this one up a little bit. So in third, you shouldn't get any movement look. So we are perfect. So let's just leave it like that, I think. I think that's a good position to be in. So I'm now winding those lock nuts down and I will tighten them up against the housing again. It's just to stop things moving so you don't have to go mad. We've got first, second, second, third, fourth, fifth. Really nice. So it does feel tight, really does feel nice and tight. And do you know what? Even if you aren't fitting one of these um, slick shifts, it's definitely worth getting in there and seeing if you've got movement. If you've got that tapping on your on your stick against when it's when it's just idle, when you're in neutral, if you've got that tapping that you can sometimes hear, it's obviously the spring is too high and it's knocking against it because the housing's worn, you could lower those stops and reduce and bring those springs down further onto that pin just to feel make it the whole thing feel tighter. That is on. Now we can put our lever back on. It's so nice to see when you bought a vehicle and it looks all tidy and everything. And when you start taking it apart, you notice that it's just shoddy workmanship. Well, this is not, this is the complete opposite. I mean, I did not expect that all to be lovely greased, new parts. Right, that's on. Where is our foam gasket? Uh, we'll do the dirty side down. That's right. Over it goes, just pushes in there. That's better. Then last thing we've got to do is just put our knobs back on. Now, we have a very nice short shifting box 
I'm gonna have to take it for a ride and see how that performs because it feels nice. So it just feels a lot more positive, feels a lot quicker. Great. Now, the only thing I should have done, obviously, is wear some gloves because uh, I didn't realize it'd be that dirty and you don't want to have like uh, gear oil seeping into your skin. It's not healthy for you in any way. So get yourself gloved up. Um, but yeah, super simple job. And as I said before in the video, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, well, uh, you know, I'm not gonna go for that yet. There's a little instructional there on how to strip it all down, get it cleaned up, make those adjustments to the springs. And that's the key really, because you want those springs to be down as much as you can without making it too stiff um, on those pins, either side of that main shaft, so that you don't have that rocking in your gear stick. And I can just feel it now, it's so much nicer to work with. So I'm gonna give it a test ride. Um, we actually are doing a trip shortly and I just need to make some adjustments to the loft spring as well because I've still got that pedal sitting too high. Um, so once we've made the adjustments to that, we're gonna hit the road, do a little green lane, try out the new uh, slick shift, try out the loft spring and give you a little bit more feedback on just how good we think that is. But I'm really pleased, that makes such a difference. After the last um, session on the Defender with parts, I really struggled because there were just so many problems came up but this particular um, procedure was so easy. Um, I guess the only thing I'd say is it's not quite as simple on the tool front as, uh, as they say. Those uh, circlet pliers that I mentioned earlier are crap, so don't buy those. Um, they just fell apart, they were really hard work. So uh, yeah, that's about it for today. Um, we've got some more um, videos coming out soon on the Defender, and we've even got some more coming out on the Disco 3. So if you haven't seen our new project vehicle, the Disco 3, which we've named the Death Star, um, please do check out above one of these sides. There'll be a little link now, uh, and you can go on there and see our new project vehicle. Um, it's actually being valeted as we speak behind me, and uh, I've taken some pictures and it is horrid in there, really horrid. Um, I've stripped all the interior out, so just wait for that transformation. But for now, from me and the Defender, thanks very much for watching. Please do subscribe. Please do give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the next one.